There are lots of Porsche 911 resto mods out there now, and the fascinating thing is that they all have a different approach, but often seem to be striving for the same thing, the Goldilocks 911. But people, that's both customers and the car's creators, perceive that ideal in different ways. Paul Stevens has done numerous 964 conversions in the past, but over the last five years, after a request from a customer, he's been developing a new take, this time based on the last of the air-cooled 911s. And this is the result, the Paul Stevens AutoArt 993R. Like all resto mods, it costs a lot of money, in the region of £400,000, which is a shame for most of us, but also surprisingly inconsequential to plenty of others who often already have the latest and greatest in the garage. At first cursory glance, it might be hard to see where the money is going, because unlike some builds that transform a base car out of all recognition, this is an intentionally subtle metamorphosis, both outside and in. But make no mistake, this has had a very thorough going over. It was stripped back to a bare shell, gutters and sunroof removed, then seam welded and fitted with an integral roll cage to increase the fundamental stiffness. There is a blend of genuine Porsche motorsport parts, like the aluminium bonnet and lightweight glass, combined with new composite body panels bespoke to this build. This is still a development vehicle, so some of the redesigned panels are not quite the finished article, things like the ducktail that will eventually be integrated into a single piece with the engine cover. I think I'd change the 996 Gen 2 GT3 wheels for something more period appropriate like a BBS split rim, but overall I love the purposeful narrow body look which has strong elements of roof about it. Inside, well unless you really know your 911s, it might surprise you to know that not a single original panel remains. The end result is an interior that, well, it looks very factory to the point where you think, well, what have they done? But actually, it's all in the details, which I, I really like. The most noticeable details are things like this when you touch them. They're facsimiles of the original plastic items, but made from metal. The dials, just that noticeably bit more simple, and obviously they've rotated the rev counter and the speedometer so you can read the important bits sort of through the, the Momo Prototipo steering wheel just to make them that bit more legible. Other things compared to 993, they've obviously got rid of the sort of the console just down here so you get this nice open feeling down through the footwells. And then just things like the gap there, which is normally it's, it's a difficult bit in 911s, but it's just that much tighter, that much neater. I love these simplified door cards and the little handles just there, inspiration taken from uh, Paul's own Lotus Elise. Even the wiring loom has been reduced by removing the electric windows, central locking and the courtesy lights in the roof. There is no stereo either, but there is still air conditioning, albeit provided by an electric unit in the front boot, which is open from the rather lovely bespoke key fob. The ambience is actually Quite sort of, it's, it's a curious thing because in some ways it's very racy because you've got the Prototipo steering wheel, you've got the pole position Recaro seat which is just, it's just excellent, it's a lovely seat to sit in. And then you've got the little ears for the wing mirrors here. And yet also, strangely, it's a car that you still feel like you could do a lot of miles in. It's nicely paired back without somehow feeling stripped out. As soon as you've driven it you know, a mile down the road, you think, yeah, this is a car that I could see myself just walking out to the garage, picking up the keys and not feeling like it was going to be stressful to drive. A chore to RS, I suppose. The only thing that does feel very RS is the familiar sound when you're idling. Like this. Chunter, 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 chunter. You either like the sound or you don't. I quite like it. it adds character, doesn't it? We should probably talk about the rest of the drivetrain too, principally the engine, which has been taken out from 3.6 to 3.8 litres. There are 993 RSR barrels and pistons and Gen V throttle bodies. Paul Stevens has done his own camshafts with Porsche Motorsport solid lifters and adjustable rockers. There are Porter conrods and the crankshaft bearings and oil pump are all 997 GT3 parts. The end result is an engine with 330 brake horsepower at 7,400 RPM, 265 pounds foot of torque, which is
which is plenty in a car that weighs just 12, 20 kilos wet. That's about 50 kilos lighter than an RS and 150 kilos lighter than a Carrera 2. If you did want to give the Wavetrack LSD and 993 RS brakes more to cope with, then Stevens is working on a 360 brake horsepower variant of the engine which revs to 8,500 RPM. The gearbox, by the way, is a 993 G5121 six speed, but fully rebuilt and with a new, slightly taller lever which falls more easily to hand. So you still get that lovely sort of slightly long throw, slightly long engagement phase in the gear shift. They've just heightened the actual lever itself which is nice so sometimes you feel like you're just reaching down a little bit in a standard 993 for the gear lever but not so in this. Given the generally simple nature of the car with no engine modes, switchable exhaust options and the like, the suspension might come as a surprise because while the Porsche Motorsport catalogue has been raided for much of the hardware, there are also electrically adjustable dampers from Tractive. You can have a little screen for tractor suspension so you can sort of play around with it, but that wouldn't really fit with the whole ethos of this car. So instead there's just a little knob just down there, which you can cycle through the five settings going from soft all the way through to the firmer setting. And obviously they can be tuned as you want. I've been going between sort of one and three generally on the road, or some of the did try the firmer settings on the smoother sections up there. It certainly seems to work very well in terms of giving a nice compromise of again that blend of sort of RS and a more touring spec. It's still firm at low speeds around town but the edges are never harsh. I might go a touch more compliant but of course it's all tunable for personal preference. Despite being an old 911 it really does give you confidence in the way it sits on the road. Although you get those 911 feels from it doesn't doesn't scare you. I think if this was this was your for some reason first 911, it, you wouldn't feel all at sea and be thinking, oh my word, what is going on here? A lot more grip than you might expect from a 993, but still feedback really tracks well over some of these bumps as well. So it sits on the road really nicely, gives you confidence to push. But as you work it harder, you feel all those lovely 911 traits come more alive. The overall feeling with this car, the thing that impresses me most perhaps, is just how cohesive it all feels. Sometimes in these builds you feel like one particular element really leaps out and dominates the experience, but this just feels like it's all a really nice package that works together. From the engine which is lovely and tractable and smooth down low but then has that edge higher up. Sounds great through that car graphic exhaust but not overwhelming, not really raucous. And it's not difficult, it's not demanding to drive either which I really like. It's evolving and it's quick but it doesn't beat you up. There is absolutely no slack in it but despite the very modern overall feeling of tightness it doesn't feel too raw either. I know it says development vehicle on the side windows but it feels really polished in the way it drives. This is a seriously well put together cohesive car. I love the fact that these wing mirrors accentuate the fact that this is a narrow body as well. It feels like a, you know, it has that old, nice old 911 feel of being intimate and really fitting on the road well. I think this is a car for, where is the, for the 911 enthusiast. I certainly won't appeal to lots of people because I think, you know, certainly you sit in it, we see photographs of it and it, it doesn't, almost doesn't look like much, but it is all in the details. And I think for somebody that gets the satisfaction from that sort of thing, doesn't necessarily want to shout about what they've got or how much they've spent, this will really appeal. And as I said at the beginning, this is one person's vision with their particular use case in mind. 
it might not be yours, but I think the breadth of options on offer in the ever-expanding 911 Resto Mod market is what makes it so appealing. It means the possibilities for daydreaming are almost limitless. No, I can't afford one. But I always find it fun thinking, what would I do if I could?